How's it going, PD team? I've got a special video tutorial for you today. We're going to be making this anisotropic CD material foil texture. Now, this is part three anisotropic material series. If you haven't watched the other two, I highly encourage you to watch the other two because this builds off those core foundations and what we're going to be building. This tutorial was suggested by Jake Times Six. He asks, how do you make the back of a CD, aka all colorful? So he's referring to this foil material with the printed line data patterns and how we create this rainbow effect. You could just use a simple gradient, but it won't react like the real foil CDs interact with the angle of the camera or your view. And so what this does is this angle and rainbow changes depending on the angle of the camera lens. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. You can see it twists. And if we go really low, it starts spinning at different angles. Something I want to mention is this material has these data lines. And when you write a data disk, it starts out at the edge and works inward. So depending on how much data is in, you have this flat area where there's no data. And then there's a divider line, a break. And then if you notice, it's kind of hard to see, but I added it anyways. Right here is where, if this is an audio disc, you would have track IDs and that's a loosely written data. And so you can see we have larger flakes of data written on the edges. So let's take a look at the node structure. Okay, so here is the rig that we built out. And this first part is very similarly built out to my first tutorial. So if you don't know what's going on here, watch the first video series and the link is in the description below. Then we're converting it to rotational data, making it a vector, remapping it with a ramp to create this here. Then it gets projected and we're doing some trickery here and then it gets plugged into the thin film. That's what creates the uh, color bands. Then this is everything related to the noise effect that creates the bump map. And so these masks right here create the line breaks in the data. This first one creates the general data lines. This one creates the loose data lines for the, the edge of the CD. And so your settings will be slightly different. This here will be exactly the same, but what you do here is totally up to you. So you can think of this as three parts. So this would be part one of my tutorial series. And then this is part two of my tutorial series. And this is kind of what's new. So let's go ahead and build this thing out. Okay, so here we are in a starter scene. We've got an HDR which is just a simple studio. The plastic disc that's clear, that's a plastic clear casing that goes around the foil is a simple material. So it's not gonna look that great because there's no environment. So just keep that in mind. It's just using a simple HDR for this tutorial. But then the disc itself is just a tube object that I flattened out, added a little bit of a chamfer at the corner to give some light height, um, light hints. And then I also added a cut where it dimples down. So I give a chamfer, I just did two slices next to each other and then loop select and brought this down a slightly. And then underneath I did a slice, beveled it. So I had three slices and then just bumped up the middle and did the same for this. And these are used for the, when you insert the disc, it feels for these grooves to place the disc in the right location. And this is just eyeballed, it's not exact. And then you'll see inside is the disc shape, which is gonna be the foil. So let me go ahead and enable the texture. And you can see the foil is right inside, right in the middle. Now, if you're making a real CD, you'd wanna take the same foil, duplicate it, and do a printout on the top side as well. But I'm gonna leave it just as single-sided. So let's go ahead and make a material, double click, call it foil, drag it onto our CD foil. And this is just a disc shape. So if you go to disc and you just pull out the center like so, and then crank up the segments, that's all I did. Okay, so let's go ahead and start building out this material. So here's the material. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select these inputs and just go ahead and delete them. So we have just the bump visible in the surface. Give us some space. And this is gonna be a long node structure. So I'm gonna just start from over here. And the first node that we're gonna start off with is going to be the state object. And again, I'm gonna select the second one here and just delete these because we're gonna just use the normal, get rid of the preview. And this state object allows us to check the camera angles by selecting the transform space. We'll set it to camera. So now this map will be affected by the camera angle. Okay, now we need to do is we need to check the change range, do the vector change range. You don't need the inputs for the min and the max values. We're gonna drag the output into the input. And we covered this in the first anisotropic tutorial, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do minus one, one, minus one, one, minus one, and one. So that's the pattern for this grid here. Negative one, 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 negative one, one, negative one, and one. Okay, so make sure, double check that you've got these correct. Let's move forward. Okay, so next what we need to do is we need to split this X, Y, and Z out into separate spaces. So we're gonna use a splitter, color splitter. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to split out the X and the Z color channels. We don't need the alpha, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. So what we're gonna be using is we're gonna use the R and the B. So this is X, Y, and Z. So to do that, we're gonna take and add a ramp and we'll use a grayscale ramp. And this is really important that you set the first knot to linear because we want a linear gradient. And we'll leave this on vertical and this is gonna be X and this is gonna be Z. And for this one, we're gonna set this from vertical to horizontal, take the R, plug it into the input and the B into Z. Next, what we need to do is we need to blend these together. So we're gonna use a layer, color layer, and we're gonna leave the base blank and drag this into the first channel, into the second channel. We don't need the masks. In our second channel, we're gonna enable and set it to screen 
tidy it up here and then we can simplify these like so now what we need to do is right now the way this is working is we have a gradient going from zero to one we need to convert this to the angles of degrees that we want this to rotate so that's where our change range comes into place so i'm going to do a change range i'm going to use a float change range we don't need the inputs so we'll take this and plug this in and i'm going to leave the first one at zero and set this to 360 because that's a full rotation so the camera's going to move up and it's going to flip and rotate 360 degrees next what we need to do is we need to convert this change range into a ramp so i'll go ramp and this is where we're going to make the gradients and this is going to be a black and white gradient so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take and drag the white here over and set this one to 25 percent take this middle here and get white set it to 50 percent and then drag the black one to 75 percent and now we have two bands that are evenly distributed but we need to remap this to a different type of rotation so we'll set this to radial and now we have a cd like gradient next what we need to do is we need to uv project this so i'm going to type uv and we'll plug in our gradient into the texture here and we need this set to object we'll leave it on planar now what we're going to do is because this is a rotation degree we're going to need to plug that into this rotate feature but we have three inputs and this is just giving us one output so what we need to do is we need to convert this to a vector because three values is a vector so i'm going to go here to vector and select vector maker and we need to plug in the vector maker into z so i'm going to hold control and click the dot we don't need x we don't need y and we're going to plug this into z and i already tested this out if we leave these values by default what happens is the projection rotation is not correct we need this to be rotated 90 degrees so in our vector maker we're going to take the first value and set it to 90 make sure you do this otherwise it won't work so we'll click the hold down control click the rotate and plug it in to our vector no need the input here next what we need to do is we're going to plug this in to the thin film so we're going to scroll down until we see thin film thickness and this is going to give us the rainbow effect so i'm going to hold down control and click thickness and if i plug this in directly what we're getting is we're getting a value from zero to one so you can see if i come in here this is one black is zero thin film requires a value between zero and a thousand now i've played around with this and i found the values between 100 and 500 are good so we need to change range this so i'm going to do float change range we don't need these inputs let's give us some space here i'm going to call this thin film thin film convert we'll take our value output plug it in and set our minimum value output to 100 tab 500 plug it into the thin film thickness and that will give us the correct gradient rainbow color effect now let's go ahead and check out and see what we've got so far come in here and hit preview and you notice there's a little bit of a rainbow showing up but it's not doing what we want so to get this to work properly we need to adjust some things first things first we need to bring up our metalness on our material and then let's see what happens we now have a rainbows in here and you can see there's some rainbows but when you have a foil the color is brighter and darker so we need to add some contrast so what we're going to do is we're going to enable the weight of the color channel and also i found using the color channel setting this to 50 looks the best so we're going to adjust this value to get those darker values in the gradient and so what we can do is we can take our output projection and add it into the weight and let's see what we got so far so good you can see we get some rainbowing effect but the color is not correct so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our editor here and change this to 1.25 go back and you can see now we have that gradient looking proper but the angle of the darker spots are not correct i want to rotate it so there's a quick fix to that we can use the color invert and we're going to instead of adding it to the weight here we're going to take the output into the input and drag it into the weight and that'll do the opposite and there we go so let's go ahead and adjust these values so i'll show you what that does so if we go to our thin film convert node and set this to a thousand you're going to get more bands and it's going to look unrealistic this might be an effect you can adjust these numbers but this seems a little bit too intense for me so i'm going to go back and set this to 500. we can also try setting this to zero as the base and we get a slightly different look in the middle so i like setting it to 100. so let's go ahead and verify that we've got the right rotation inputs so you can see it's spinning and changing angle so you can see as i move down it changes angles and it's facing us when you go over the top which is correct if you want more spin to this movement what you can do is you can go here to the change range let's call this angle and we can set this to negative 360 on the minimum and what that's going to do is it's going to exaggerate the effect you can see it's now spinning more so it's facing us and it's rotating 360. so there's that as you can see we've got a pretty complicated node structure i hope you guys understood what was going on that concludes our first phase within building this material let's go ahead and add the data lines and grooves inside of this foil okay so here we're back at the node structure we're going to be working with the bump map channel and if you don't have the disc built out the clear plastic sleeve that cut coats the foil um your values will 
will be slightly different with the bump amount. Um, so what we're gonna start off with is making a bump. So double click, do bump, bump map. And this value that we start off with is gonna be really high. For some reason, this value needs to be pretty high to, to go through the clear plastic um, to get the right texture. So I'll pull this down to give us some space. And I know we're gonna need a layer. So we're gonna go ahead and type in layer, plug it in. And I usually will disable the base layer and just work from layer one so we can minimize this. So let's build out the data that's gonna coat the whole CD foil. And then the rest of these will be used as masks to take away the lines and data. So we'll come over here. And this next sec this next section is covered in my second anisotropic material builder. We create the brushed circular metal. So this should be kind of similar. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a ramp. And what we're going to be building is a custom UV map. So I'll call this one red. And we'll set the first value to linear. And we'll set this to circular. So we get this. And then we'll take and add this one down here, duplicating it by holding control or command and call this one green. So for the red, we're going to select the last node here and make it 100% red. So should be 255, 0, and 0. And the green one will make green. We'll set this to 0 and 0. So it's 100% green. And we need to reverse this. So I'll do invert gradient, make sure it's linear. And then we need to take these two and we need to add them together. So you can see the red has a black dot in the center and the green comes from the center and goes outward. So we need to merge these together with a vector add. So I'll type in add. You can see there's one called vector add and we'll add the first one and the second one together. Can minimize these like so. Next, what we want to do is we want to stretch these values. So I'm going to take this and use a multiply node, MUL, and we're going to do a vector multiply. We'll plug this into here. And then for our second value, we're going to set this to a thousand by a thousand. And the reason we're doing the first and the second one is this is U and V and we're not doing in Z. So UV maps are flat. And so this is up and down, left and right. Let's give us some space. Next, what we want to do is we're going to take this and drive a noise. So I'm going to do noise, max on noise. And what we need to do is we need to scale the max on noise down to one because we're going to use some detailed noise. And to warp the noise in a circular fashion, using these, this custom UV map that we made, we need to basically access it by stretching it using the offset. So I'm going to do a command click, the dot, and add this into here. And with the scale, I'm going to set this to 500, 0, and 0. And you can kind of faintly see that the noise is making a circular pattern when you do that. So this value that you put here is going to be how long those data lines stretch for. And I found 500, or this material works the best. So then let's go ahead and plug this into the first color layer, and let's see how this looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solo the noise, turn on my render, and you can see we get a noise pattern in a circular fashion. So if I set this value here on the noise to something like 20, you get less stretching happening. So we'll set this to 500 again. And there we go. So next what we want to do is we want to mask the inside and the edge. So we're going to use a gradient to do that. And we're going to plug it into this mask input. So do ramp. And my masks, I like color coding green. So you go to the preview, the basic tab. We'll set this to green. And I'll do 50%. Plug it in. And this mask under the general tab, we're going to select both of these knots and set them to step so that when we make incremental nodes, so I'll go to something like here, solo it. You can see it's cutting off right here. So we need to set this to circular and then we'll need to play with these values. So what you're going to do is you're going to move this knot till it comes into about here. I'm on a single monitor, so it's a little trickier. So we'll leave it just like a little bit more. There we go. So that's good. You can get it closer to the edge if you want. And then we're going to do the edge here. So to do that, we'll make another knot by taking our black and holding control and dragging. So there's the knot showing up. We'll get it kind of close. There we go. So your values and your position, depending on the scene size, is going to be slightly different. So I'll set this to 70%. And there you go. So you can see we have a little bit of a gap. And this is going to be where we put the data. Now we want to see this in effect. So I'll unsolo this and just click the color layer solo. And you can see now we have no bump here and then we have no bump here. Next, what I want to do is I want a little bit of a, a line right here. So what I can do is I can add another one of these. So I'm going to take this and duplicate it. And this time I'm going to just bring this, see what this value is. We're going to just move it over a little bit and whatever this value is. So let's just do even 27. I'll set this one to 20, 28. So it's a nice little groove. Let's do 27.5. So it's really thin. We'll take this one and plug it in to the mask. We're not using color. And for layer two, we'll set this to white. And so this mask is just filling in a white texture. So you can see there's the band and you can bump it up to the edge here if you want. I'll leave it right here and I'm going to make this even thinner, 27.25. So it's super thin. There we go. So let's go ahead and make the data lines. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and enable number three. We need the color and the mask and I'm going to just take these let me turn off the render here, duplicate it, plug it into number three. I'm also going to take the first mask, duplicate it, plug it into the mask here. And this is our edge. So I'm going to leave this one, it's at 70. So I'll just drag this out, set this to 70. So it's right masking just the edge. Now with this, the noise I like setting to cell noise. And we'll set this to something like 10 for now. So it's bigger blocks. And we'll set this to something like 25 on the scale. And we can play with this. So let's go ahead and solo the color channel. And you can see we've got that black ring. 
but we don't see the blocks. So this is going to take some messing around with. So let's go ahead and set this to one. See if that gives us what we want. And you can see there's those lines that are blocked and that looks pretty good. So that's the looser data that can be the track listing and stuff like that. Let's see this, how it works. So we unsoloed and there we go. So there's our data lines and the edge data that's looser and more broken up is kind of hard to see and you can fiddle with those values. And then you can see we got a line right here, which is also kind of hard to see. And then it's a flat area where the data has not been written. So these blank foils don't have texture on them where there's no data. And there we go. So that is the shader network to create a foil on a CD that interacts with the camera angle. So let's try it out. And it spins when you rotate it, just like a real CD. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.